Hello everyone, welcome to Positron Play's Hand of Fate. I don't know what the opening cutscene play here. Come, sit. You have passed the 13 gates. And you come to my table to play the game of life and death. Your stake is wagered. I refuse none who come here, yet I say, turn back. And with that we are presented with The Dealer, and this is essentially the title screen for the game other than that brief splash screen opening. Uh, Hand of Fate is a collectible card game dungeon crawler? And that'll make more sense uh, as we go on, and as to why I'm playing with a controller, actually. Playing with a PS4 controller. So let's get started. The game begins. One lives and one dies. Let us see what you are made of. And I've tried to keep his voice up because the narrator, the dealer, actually, is essentially serves as the narrator, is fantastic. Here is the first member of my court. The Jack of Dust. Twelve in all must fall before you may challenge me. So the Jack of Dust, the bandit leader is stronger and faster than most bandits encountered. He can become enraged, making powerful, unblockable attacks. He also inspires his followers to steal gold on each hit. The ruins of an ancient temple among the eternally shifting sand dunes was the mysterious leader of the Desert Bandits, infamous for his reign of terror over any spice caravans that dare take their chances traveling through his domain. He rules as a king over the barren lands. Fancy card tricks. Let the cards fall where they may. We begin. So this is kind of our main playing field. On the lower left you can see our gold, food, and health. You can always review your cards here. This is our character. I don't know if he has a name. And he's not customizable. Um, but he is our protagonist of sorts. Kind of a burly looking fellow. You can see the cards we have equipped, which will come into play. Oh, and this is a game too. It uh, just came out of early access. It was in early access for a little while, and it just came out. So pretty nice to see it come to fruition, so to speak. Fair Merith, I'm not surprised to find that this encounter remains vivid in your memories. So this is the kind of tutorial area. I reset my progress um, just so I could get kind of everybody with a fresh start here. But as we move around the cards, essentially it turns it's kind of the cards are laid out kind of like a dungeon. We come across different cards. One day in a shady forest, you encounter an elf maiden. She stops to greet you. We can ask for longer life, ask for supplies, or ask for gold. Um, I think we'll ask for supplies. The bread will sustain you for many days. The dealer draws you two food gain cards. So there I'm we go. Sure it's three food. For that. And five food. The elders of our kind often say that we must retread paths we once took in order to gain an advantage on the present. Farewell, mortal. And we get to choose again. So food, essentially, every time we move a space, it costs one food, and we heal a little bit of health. Mr. Lionel. I was never a fan of illusion or pretense. Here, I'll make an exception. Whilst enjoying your evening meal at the local tavern, a strange old man takes the seat next to yours. He taps your shoulder quite painfully with his wooden staff to get your attention. You notice he appears to be a goblin, poorly disguised as a human. Yeah, that mustache isn't doing it for him. His wizened face grins at you with a hint of madness. My name is Mr. Lionel. If you give me what I need, boy, I'll conjure up your heart's desire with this wizarding wand of my own creation. Cackles uncontrollably. So we can give him bread, we can give him gold, ask him what he needs, or ignore him. Let's give him some bread. We have tons of food. Considers the bread seriously before placing it in his coat pocket, seemingly satisfied. Taps his staff on the ground, shield materializes at your feet. There you go, old bean. 
It smiles a warm grin that reveals all his chipped and yellow teeth. Your face reminds me of my son. I haven't met you before, have I? And we get a shield. I cannot expect you to get by without some protection. Shows that we can now reflect projectiles. And counter. And we'll be getting into the other half of the game, or the other portion of the game, pretty soon. Make good use of this skill if you wish to survive. And he snatched a pickled onion off our plate and sprints out the door. Twisted Canyon. That first moment. That glinting weapon. The call to action, to adventure. Truly, there is nothing like it. See a weapon glinting in the sunlight, lying next to the skeleton at the bottom of the canyon. Ah oh, yeah, let's climb down and get it. Now we are presented with a choice of four cards, and they will be shuffled. Choose from these options. Now I think you could actually technically watch the shuffling, but it's pretty difficult. Good, we got success. Very carefully, make our way down to the bottom of the canyon, and we draw a weapon card. And we got a sword. Sure, we'll the equip it. moment to savor. That will make you much more effective. And we found the stairs. The stairs lead you to the next floor of a given dungeon. Your journey is well begun. This is what I was looking for. You show some aptitude for the game. Perhaps this will not be as boring as I thought. Winding trail. Ah, suddenly a tree falls across the path, blocking the way ahead. Dior draws a monster card. Give us all your gold or die. Well, we're not gonna give them all our gold. We don't even have any. The battle begins. So now this is the other kind of core portion of the game. Which, if you don't know anything about Hand of Fate, is probably going to seem pretty weird. And I can skip this animation, but for the first time I want to let it play out. There's our sword, there's our shield, and our equipment. Go kick some ass. Now we begin to raise the stakes. The arena itself will fight against you. So, when they have a green icon above their head, much like if you play any of the recent Batman games, you can counter. Or like uh, Assassin's Creed or things like that. So there's this brawling aspect, which is where all the combat takes place in the game. Oh, I actually got hit there. Starts off pretty basic, but gets pretty complex. And there are other 3D combat sections as well. There are trap mazes and things like that. And the combat isn't super complex, but it's satisfying. And we get an equipment card. Oh, we get an axe. That's a little better than our a sword, sure. Weapon, but effective nonetheless. And we get three food and some health. A little extra health, but it is only a momentary respite. So we could go north or east. Let's go north. Oh, we found the traveling mage. So it'll serve as a shop. And I don't have any gold, but I'll show it off either way. If you were wondering why you've been collecting all that gold, you now have your answer. We're starting to get into the meat of the game now. The back and forth between resources and rewards. So there's the Hag's Wraps. Uh, each strike inflicts a curse, slowing and weakening your opponent. A uh, special magic ability. We flip over to this card. There are Hernie's Antlers. And a plunderer's cap. Well, I haven't seen those two before. I mean, I haven't played a lot yet, but... Uh, so I guess this stuff is randomized, too. We can't afford anything, of course. Now, I believe now that we've seen those cards, they'll be identified if we get them. Ah, and there's the Jack of Dust. You have reached my first champion. A good man, driven to madness by a war that took all from him. Wife and child. Kith and kin. From such dark and brittle iron, I forge my tools. Now we see your metal. Alright, we've got our boss fight. Unlock more cards if you can defeat this encounter. And as he explains, those tokens he just pulled out there will turn into cards we can use in our deck should we succeed. And also be joined by four of dust, which are four humanoid opponents. Some 
some enemy attacks cannot be blocked or countered. Get out of the Well, oh, that was a counterable attack. Your own so I can also manually shield bash here, which will kind of make them stagger a bit. Nope. Yeah, red effects cannot be blocked. But we can roll out of the way. Sometimes you can get in a swing, so even if you don't counter properly, it'll count. And actually, we took out the boss. I think. Oh no, he's getting back up. But his pal is not. Nope, that's unblockable. Ah, oh, he did some sort of special. I think that's the gold stealing special. And he actually hits for a decent amount of damage. There he goes. And we get a special card, the Jack of Dust. Down into the worms with him. Perhaps there is peace for him in the grave, poor soul. One champion has been sent to the cabinet. Yet we are only at the start of our road. You will face 11 more opponents who will test your strength, your memories, and your resolve. Few fall at the first hurdle, none reach the last. We have wagered, and you have won. You so you can see here. Rewards, yet I will also claim mine. As you improve, as he's explaining, so do I. Balance must be retained. So you can see here we kind of get a Hearthstone-esque card reveal. These are the cards we have won from this set. Couple medium armor, looks like a weapon. And new challenges, banded attack, maze of traps, and goblins. Shall we deal again? And thus ends our first set of the game. But let's play one more time. That was pretty short. That was just a tutorial. So we'll play one more game here before I end the video. Ah, good. Now you understand the basics, we can begin in earnest. Your hero is returned to his beginning items. Our decks are reset. Welcome to the cabinet, home of the members of my court. So right now we can only select story mode, but there is an endless mode as well. And as you can see here, there are 12 different, uh, I guess, bosses, you would say. Each one represents a different thing, and I think these cards at the end are like big reward cards. So next up is the Jack of Skulls. Time for you to face my undead army. Meet the Jack of Skulls. So we can go into the deck builder, and we have a choice. We can have it recommend, which I'll just say for now. Uh, or we can go in and we can actually select what cards we want to be in the deck. But for now, it's got all our new cards in here, so this is a pretty good set. And... Um, there is a new challenge that we don't have in here. So maybe I'll take out the maiden. Some cards are locked. Okay, it's it's removed from your deck. Oh, what did that say? Oh, until you defeat the king of dust. All right, that's kind of neat. Uh, we could take out the ambush and put it in the river, I think. Yeah, let's try that. And you can see the ones that have a token at the bottom will unlock new cards if we complete that objective. Yeah, so let's do that. And obviously, as time goes on, the decks grow. And we will start. I will add my own cards to the deck. How boring life would be without a little spice. I always love his fancy dealing animation. You play for life and death. Prepare yourself. Ah, we got the Twisted Canyon, yes, this will give us a weapon. Game. That initial moment where things begin. I have worked on these cards all my days, and the canyon has been there from the outset. What's also pretty cool is that even if you find the same card again, he'll have different things to say. It's a good year for narrators. Ah, good success. I think if we fail, we take damage there. We'll draw a weapon. What do we get? 
Ah, we got a sword. Really? Is that what you're going to do? Well, yes. Captain of the Guards. I always thought it was best to avoid the problems of others. I see you have no such concerns. You hear a shout from up ahead and the sounds of battle. Broken bones litter the area around the man, but there are still more closing in on him and he appears badly injured. Stranger, he calls out, he throws his weapon to you. Here, take my mace and put an end to these monstrosities. Ooh. Nice, that's actually better it's than our a sword. of iron on a stick. Not terribly subtle. <laughs> and it's holy, so it'll prevent them from resurrecting. Sure, yeah, we'll equip that right now. Looks like we were facing up against four skeletons. I'll let this play out a couple of times, and I'll start skipping them as time goes on. Pretty small area. Nice river scene. Skeletons make the weirdest sounds. And they can block, too. I think we might be able to break through their block with our shield bash. Ooh, I thought that guy was going to let me counter. Oh, we don't have a shield, so we can't counter. That's actually pretty interesting. I can kick, though, because I don't have a shield, and I think that breaks blocking. A very satisfying finishing blow. And the sound of trucks back up in my background. Good work putting them to rest. Keep the mace. We have enough back here at Kadir. It says, slowly standing. We've been hearing reports of undead in our kingdom recently. I came to investigate. Stops looking around all the bone fragments. More of them here than I suspected. Some new horror must have decided to settle in these parts and brought its minions. The Cards token is ours. Well done. Ah, Mr. Lionel. I'm starting to wonder if you're simply leaving this card in as a quick way to get your hands on a shield. <laughs> Perhaps. We don't have a lot of food this time, though. Let's see what he needs. Need? I need to help you. Oh, and he just gives us the shield. All right. Well, that's pretty good. A strong left arm is as important as a strong right arm, after all. And we found the stairs, so we'll go to the next floor now. Food, but you will also heal as you proceed. Many have reached this far. Further, in fact. I do not know if you have what it takes to do better than they did. Ah, maze of traps. So here's one of the things I was talking about. There's a token in it for you if you win. Sure, we'll enter the cave. So this is another one of the uh, kind of brawler segments, but without any actual brawling in it. Instead, we'll have this kind of obstacle course to get through. Should be able to roll past this. I don't know what the triggers. Oh dear. All right, we got a crusher here. Um, let's see. Maybe we just roll across that? Ooh, that's really quick. Just trying to get burned. I don't know if we can block any of the arrows or I'm gonna get caught here. I don't know. Can we break these pots? No, we can knock them around though. Uh, I'll try roll across. Ooh, that was close. Alright, can do that again. Watch out for the crusher. Nice, made it. Actually, the first time I went through there, it took quite a bit of damage. And we should get that token now. And we get three gain cards. We get 25 gold. 15 gold. Well, that's quite a bit. And third, wow. All right, so we got 70 gold. So if we can find a shop, that'd be fantastic. Ah, the traveling tinker. Shady Grove off the beaten trail. You find a traveling merchant looking to trade with wandering adventurers. Sure, we'll go here. I don't know if he sells different things than the mage or not. We can also buy food. Uh, so reveal the medium armor. The explorer's helm reveals the stairs and 
encounter upon entering a level and grants a gold bonus for revealing every encounter on a level. Hmm. Uh, Damocles during combat can throw daggers. I'll probably pick that up to show it off. A classical approach to dealing with crowds. Artifacts and um provide powerful special abilities to use in combat, but it takes time to ready them. We have a better weapon, so I will buy the helmet and I'll buy the medium armor. Late to navigation, but still. Yes. Armor protects you from damage. The best armor, of course, does so much more. Now, we aren't really short. I could sell some things. Um, I could sell that sword, in fact. But it's not going to be enough to buy food, I don't think. We can always come back here, too, if I need to. Though it will cost us food to come back. Ah, the river. Running water protects against many things in myth. Generally, though, it's just a pain to get past. The water's clear but fast flowing. Sure, we'll attempt to cross. Ooh. Two successes, a failure, and a huge failure. Um, let's go for three. Oh no, we get a failure. Your medium-sized armor doesn't make the crossing easy, and the current pushes you downstream. When you emerge from the water, your pack feels lighter. Uh-oh. Ooh, we lose five gold. We didn't have any gold, thankfully. That's interesting. I wonder if the medium armor added another failure card there. And we don't get a token, because we did not succeed. We found the maiden. Are running low. Can you press on? Uh, we definitely want supplies. That should give us food. Buy food. One of my cards. And three Small food. Benefit. I will not be so graceful for long. Remember, mortal, that bold heroes make for great ballads, but survivors think twice before meddling in the affairs of gods and monsters. Ominous. And we found the stairs. Down once more, seeking the heart of it all. And we get a twenty gold bonus for since we unveiled all the cards. Good. Now all you need to do is find and kill the Jack of Skulls, and we can progress. And there won't be any stairs here. Ah, goblins. Being stout and meek, goblins know they cannot use strength or fear to survive. They rely on more mischievous methods. They steal from you when you're asleep and escape through magical portals. Scavenger the air tell tales of the hidden vaults of these goblins hide their ill-gotten loot in. Their portals are made by dark magic, unkind to all but themselves. Win this and claim my token. One night you awaken to find your belongings being rifled through by goblins. As soon as you notice as they notice you stirring, they run away with a piece of your equipment. They have also st st stolen some of your food and gold. Bummer. Two goblins. That's my mace! Well, I'm glad I kept the sword now. And you can see that all our equipment shows up on our character too, which is always a nice touch. And we have this artifact now, which I'll use right here. That was a little far away. And you can see it's got a little bit of a cooldown. But we're gonna corner them. Ooh, they're really fast. I don't know if they can get away entirely. So I should really go for my mace very quickly, just in case. Good, I did hit him. Wow, did I insta-kill him? That's crazy. See if I can do that to this guy too. Not quite. I wonder if I get that gold that was left on the ground. Maybe not. So I should have my mace back now, and I believe it automatically re-equips it, which is very nice. Ah, uh, the devil's choice. I like this demon. He lies as often as he tells the truth. Here to test my might. Ooh. Choose a foe. I see now, I think. I don't know what the um the corner cards mean. Those I think that's just that those are hurt his cards. 
So we could fight four humans, three humans, or two skeletons. Let's fight his just in case this has a special thing to it. More skeletons for you to deal with. It's also the easiest of the encounters. Though I kind of prefer the more hectic ones right now. Oh, we actually Oh, I I didn't read carefully. We were actually selecting the one to get rid of, not the one to deal with. So I really made myself uh pretty complex combat here. Let's watch for counters. Oh, I lost my combo there. I was never very good at the the Arkham games in terms of keeping on my combo meter. Some of them are too busy taunting us to fight, thankfully. However, we can do this. Yeah, I actually nailed two of them there. Yeah, and again, like the combat is really simple, but it's it's really satisfying. Oh, so we get three game cards. We get food. That's good. We get some equipment. And another shield. Fling your we already have one. Challenges back in their faces. And some health. Oh, max Take health. Token. It is yours. Huh. I wonder if that persists through different rounds. Probably not. Dead King's Hall. Greed. If it were not for greed, then who would play at this game? Ornate coffin and main burial chamber may hold spectacular wealth, but will surely be guarded. Two monster cards. Four humans. I'll try to take them by surprise. Uh, let's go for two. Huge success. Nice. Taking one of them down before they can even react, so we can drop one of these cards. I read it this time. Not that it would have mattered. We'll now only have two of them to deal with. In fact, we can probably use our magic here. Yeah. You were such a fearsome adversary. I will bear that in mind. The dealer seems to notice that we took them out very quickly. And we get this card now. And three more gain cards. So we get some equipment. Ah, desperate measures. I'm impressed. Few select these sorts of weapons because nobody ever anticipates being in peril. Such misplaced confidence is usually their downfall. That's a pretty nice commentary on why I usually don't actually pick this kind of equipment. Mace inflicts more damage the lower the health of the wielder is. Yeah, we'll equip that. Get some food and some more food. Wow, we have I'm tons sure of food. I'm grateful for that. Oh, there's another shop. Sure, we'll check it out. I wonder if we can sell food. I don't think so, but... Oh, we could also heal. Huh. We could buy food. We don't need to buy food. Can we sell food? I don't believe so. We can sell our sword, though. Even if goblins come around, we're not going to need two, uh, three weapons. As far as we know, we can't dual wield. We always have to have a weapon and a shield. Uh, we could buy the axe or the chains of rage. During combat, strikes sustained from bows and wands have a chance to restore your cooldowns. Can't afford it, but maybe I'll just sell my mace. Ah, oh, it's only worth three. I need five. The undead. We could sell our explorer's helmet. No. Well. Yeah, you know what? Just for the sake of unveiling that card, I'll take the risk. An item that tells you how to move quickly, but tempts you to take your time. Yes. Interesting choice. Does the, uh, no, the helmet doesn't show up again. We are all set here. Move on. We've only got a couple of spaces left, and I should be okay without the helmet. Actually, we've only got one space left. Jack of Skulls. The undead. Of all the players in the game, these are the most dangerous in the world, yet in no natural form. 
a wrongness, an error, cheating. Serving as squads, is, serving as captains to squads of lesser skeletons, these unholy abominations strike fear into the hearts of all warm-blooded folk. For until this fiend is defeated, their legion are effectively endless. And that's Challenge true; he can res them. And a token if you succeed. And we'll get two tokens for winning this. So we'll be dealing with four skeletons in addition to the boss. Shots from rifles cannot be deflected. You would do better to avoid them. Are you agile enough? So it doesn't actually kill the skeletons. Let's see if I can hit them all of these now. Yeah, there we go. He has a lot of unblockable attacks. Oh wow, I think we already took him out. Nice. I think we have to take out all his minions as well before he resurrects. There we go, and we should get his card now. I did so much better. I've actually played up through this point, and I did so much better that time than I did before. Ah, well done. Well done indeed. But you have roused the dead in their dusty tombs, and even I cannot say what will come of it. So we have a lot now, of cards to unlock here. It becomes more interesting. Will the tools you've earned suffice to address the challenges I pose? That is the question. Is Scavenger's Cap? Time heals and more goblins? The Devil's Wager unlocked. And a treasure chest. Crucible, Queen of Dust, Helpful Priest, and Desert Storm. There's a Norman Schwarzkopf joke in there somewhere, but man, does that make me sound old. Helm of Reflection, Consuming Shame, Angel's Wing, and Frostfang. Ooh, Frostfang. I like that. Shall we deal again? And thus ends our first time in Hand of Fate. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're enjoying the game. Um, it is on Steam if you want to pick it up for yourself instead of just watching me play, but I hope you'll watch my videos too. Um, I plan on playing through the whole game uh, for the story mode, and then I might do some endless afterwards depending on um, how it goes. So thanks for watching. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click like. It helps out a lot. And subscribe if you want to see more. See you soon.